Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth today. Now listen, God's love is extended throughout the whole earth. David says, the whole earth is full of your mercies, praise God. And that's the truth. He's extended his love towards all men. The question then is, have you received the love of God or not? See, it's not a question of God giving. He has already given. It's a question of you receiving his love. So have you received his love? I'm basking in his love day by day. And I can tell you this truth. It is sweet. Praise God. Yeah, it's so sweet. You know that song, the songwriter wrote, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. I can tell you from experience that it is truly sweet. Praise God. You know, Living a life without worries. Living a life knowing that everything is under control. Only Jesus can give you that. I'm telling you the truth. No matter the uncertainty in the world, you are just convinced in your heart. And I don't mean assumption or simple hoping. I'm talking about real-time fellowship and knowledge from the Lord himself that relax everything is going to be all right and then you keep seeing the signs we don't just sit down there to hope we know what we have believed and we hear instructions from the one who we have believed that is what gives us hope do you understand what i'm saying you can't have hope without hearing from him then your hope is baseless you don't have hope because someone else is having hope. You have hope because you know and you have heard from him. So when he has told you this is how this thing is going to be, you know, I believe him. See, just like Paul traveling on that sea. And they had an issue. And Paul told them, look, an angel stood beside me. And he told me, I fear not, Paul. You will stand before Caesar. And Paul looked at them and says, You know what, guys? I believe that it shall be even as it was told me. Praise God. What a life. Others did not hear that voice. They didn't see that angel. But Paul did. It's the same thing that happens to us every time in life. Whatever you're going through, you, you, your first thought goes, Lord, what would you have me do here now? Without fear in your heart, see, because there is no challenge you will get into. Oh, even if it was a mistake from you, there is no challenge you are going to get into that God will have to crack his brain on how to get you out. No, sir. There is no challenge you will get to that God haven't, oh, <laughs> you know, Sometimes people get confused about this. Now today is a special day, so I'm, I'm sharing, you know, these thoughts with you. But by the way, this, this whole week, we're going to be talking about God's financial system. Praise God. God's financial system. That's what we're going to be talking about this week. Now I've been talking to you from the beginning of this, this year about tithing. Now, it's part of it. Now, I'm taking you into the, 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 the broad plan that God has. But you see, first of all, you've got to know this today. Jesus is real. See? He's real. Everything you hear from God's word, every message you hear, every message you study in the scriptures, if you don't come to the personal reality of Jesus Christ, it means nothing to you. All, everything you've heard will mean nothing to you. So we are not talking about Jesus we have heard about. Yes, we heard about him. But listen, because we heard about him and we believed, 
we met him. Praise God. Yeah, we met him. You remember the woman by the well. She, she got the whole village. You know, she went around and said, come see a man that have told me everything I ever did. And then they all came out and said, hey, okay, another man, yes, let's go see. And they came to listen to Jesus. And when Jesus was done with them, you know what they said to the woman? He says, now we have believed. Not because of your words, talking to the woman now, but because we have seen him and have heard him for ourselves. Praise God. Yeah. Someone may have preached the gospel of Jesus Christ to you. Maybe by television, maybe by personal witnessing. Whatever way you heard the gospel, maybe in church or wherever. Until you meet Jesus yourself, don't get satisfied, brothers and sisters. And I'll tell you this, I found out many, many years ago. That even the people who told us about Jesus didn't tell us a tenth of who he really is. No man can tell you. Even I preach him, but still I'll tell you this. I can tell you a lot about him. But until you meet him, you will understand what the knowledge of him truly is. Jesus is real, I'm telling you again. He's real. He's not just out there, you know, we're hoping, you know, we are just serving. Let's follow the rules so that we will please him. No, 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 no. We, we don't live our lives set to follow certain rules. We are in a relationship with him. And we live our lives because he teaches us what to do. The world looks at us and says, hmm, you're, you're very, you know, together. You, you, I, I notice there are certain things you observe. We don't observe them for observation's sake. You see that we observe them, but we are responding to our relationship with him. So he tells us the truth about something and we know not to do that thing or to do that thing. You understand what I'm saying? So we, we do it by revelation. So that's what a lot of people don't know. Now, because they lack revelation, just like I was talking to you about tithing, we tithe by revelation. It's not a law that we are trying to keep so that God will not be angry with us. No, we have come into that system with God where we see that, look, with my tithe, I can touch someone's life. With my tithe, I can connect with God's financial system. With my tithe, I can connect with my high priest who is Jesus Christ. Oh, I've been receiving testimonies. Now, by the way, thank you, everyone who sends in testimonies. Some of you even send in questions. Thank you. Because you're showing us that you are watching and you are listening and understanding what we are saying. And thank you also for those of you who share these messages on your WhatsApp, Telegram, wherever, Facebook, wherever. And I encourage you to do more. Let this word go out. Let us fill the earth with the truth. People need to hear the truth. It's scarce. See, the Bible talks about a season when the word of God was scarce. And I told you, the Bible prophesied again that that's still going to happen. Now, it doesn't, you know, you know, many people think it means the Bible is going to be out of circulation. No, 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 not necessarily. You can have the Bible, but you don't have the Word of God. It means people will not be paying attention to what God is saying. That's what it means by the Word of God was scarce. And, and even in the future, when the Word of God is going to be scarce, it is just because people are not paying attention to what God is saying. So you listen to a preacher, he's preaching, and he's preaching based on statistics, you see. He's telling you, look, based on statistics, based on this evidence, based on this, we should be ready or we should prepare for this. Now, now those, those, are, those are not the words of God. John actually said, he said, he whom God has sent speaks God's words. My job as a preacher 
is to tell you what the Lord is saying. My job is to give you the mind of God. I can read the Bible to you. When I read the Bible to you, I communicate to you what God is saying. And that's what we do as preachers. That's why you cannot preach without the anointing of God. Preaching is not just eloquence of speech. Preaching is not just wide range of, of enlightenment or study. No. That's why an illiterate can speak the word of God. And the whole place will be electrified. Knowledge will be impacted. And you wonder, just like they wondered about Jesus, how come this guy knows so many letters? Haven't never learned. Because they knew Jesus. They knew he didn't go to the best schools. They, they knew the best schools then. You know? so, so they looked at Jesus, this guy. You know, the Bible said about Jesus that when we see him, there is nothing about him that is desirable. There is no beauty that we should desire him. Isaiah said that in verse chapter 53. No beauty that we should desire him. Yet, he was the savior of the world. Praise God. So they looked at Jesus and said, man, this guy is speaking accurately. How did he learn these things? Same thing with the disciples of Jesus Christ. They said about them. They said, come, how come these guys know so much? And then they took notice. Yeah, they've been with Jesus. Now you remember that? Oh, the same way they thought about Jesus was the same way they thought about the disciples. And I'll tell you this truth. Anyone who knows Jesus, anyone who walks with Jesus will bear the same testimony. They will look at your life. They will try to, to track. Did he go to Harvard? No. <laughs> Actually, he went to St. You know, something grammar school in, in the backside of the village. And you wonder... So, so where did he get it from? He got it from Jesus. Praise God. I encourage you today. Re-examine your relationship with God. And when I mean with God, I'm talking about get into real-time fellowship with Jesus Christ. And he's willing. He wants to take care of you. He has everything planned out already. That, that's what we're going to be looking at this week. Everything. Things planned out. You know, sometimes when I remember years ago when I began to see this thing, sometimes I will sit down and I will cry. You know why I'm crying? Why are people suffering? I, I look at people struggling to make ends meet. I look at people, you know, running just, just, you know, and then you wonder, like, Lord, and then you begin to pray, say, Lord, can't they know? Because you look at yourself, you know that it wasn't your intelligence that brought you into this knowledge. You know that you didn't go to any specific school that brought you this knowledge. But the Lord himself giving grace to you. So you begin to pray, say, Lord, multiply this grace. Let all men know. Let all men know. That's why we teach we do all these things, you know, to get his words to you because this thing is real to us. So check yourself. When last did the Lord Jesus talk to you? Don't tell me he talked to me when I read the Bible, as in when I read the Susu Bible, so I believe. I'm not, that's not what I'm talking about. You, when he talks to you, you will know. You will know. And that's what God wants. He wants us to begin to hear his voice. He wants us to begin to relate with him personally. And I pray for you today. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen, I enjoy that relationship. And today, the prayer I pray for you, I say, Father, I know your voice is real. I know you are real. And I ask for everyone watching me right now that you make yourself real and known to them even as you have done to me. Let them come to know you in truth. Fully express your love in their hearts and let them see you. Thank you, Father, for this. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. 
Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.